It's unbelievable that Don Knotts, the man who brought stomach-churning laughter to audiences in the 60s, passed away 15 years ago. Audiences loved Don not only because of his humor, but also because of his clean life. However, today, Don's daughter, Karen Knotts, suddenly spoke up to confirm rumors about his career, shocking fans. Let's watch this video because it will give you details of every little mentioned aspect of Don Knotts' life and career. Jesse Donald Knotts, born in Morgantown, West Virginia in 1924, faced a tragic and challenging childhood. Delving into his early years, author Daniel DeVise uncovered a deeply troubled upbringing in his book, Andy and Don, The Making of a Friendship and a Classic American TV Show. Knotts was an accidental child, born 14 years after his nearest sibling. His living conditions were far from ideal, with his two older brothers sharing their bedroom with a boarder, leaving Knotts to sleep on a cot in the kitchen. His father, Jesse Sr., was largely bedridden by the time Knotts was born. Described as a schizophrenic alcoholic with hysterical blindness, Jesse Sr. was not only physically incapacitated, but also struggled with mental health issues. The abuse was a grim constant in Knotts' childhood. One harrowing incident etched in his memory involved his father threatening him with a knife. The layout of their home made it particularly distressing for young Knotts to navigate. To move from his kitchen bedroom to anywhere else, he had to traverse the living room, passing the sofa where his father spent most of his time. This journey often ended in threats, creating a pervasive atmosphere of fear and danger. By the age of 30, Knott's mother, Elsie, confronted him about the traumatic experiences he had endured. The ongoing threats and the intimidating environment took a toll on Knott's, manifesting in his physical appearance. He was pale, thin, and frequently unwell as a young boy. Looking back on his early years, Knott's remarked, I did not come into the world with a great deal of promise. The adversities of his childhood undoubtedly shaped the trajectory of Knott's life, contributing to the challenges he faced on his journey to becoming a well-known entertainer. Daniel DeVise, the author of Andy and Don, The Making of a Friendship and a Classic American TV Show, had a poignant personal connection to Don Knott's. They were brothers-in-law. DeVise, in his exploration of Knott's life, uncovered the complex dynamics within Knott's family, shedding light on a childhood marked by hardship and tragedy. Knott's relationship with his brothers, William Earl, known as Shadow due to his thinness, and Sid was far from conventional. Devise described them as hardly distinguishable from the transitory figures who came and went from their University Avenue home. Despite their humor, noted by the New York Times, the family struggled to find laughter in a life that offered little to be joyous about. The familial challenges extended beyond mere eccentricity. Knotts's daughter Karen later revealed to Closer Weekly that her father had experienced mistreatment at the hands of his brothers. Their frequent drunkenness led to heated fights, creating an environment of tension and instability. The tragedy struck when Shadow, the thin and funny but asthmatic brother, succumbed to an asthma attack, leaving Knotts to grapple with the loss during his teenage years. The weight of growing up in such a tumultuous environment, rife with fear and conflict, was undoubtedly profound. Don Knotts harbored a deep yearning for happiness, a desire that shaped his later life. In coping with the challenges, Knotts found solace in the realm of imagination. He shared with the L.A. Review of Books that he managed to carve out comfort by filling his space with imaginary characters, through whom he could act out scenarios of joy and happiness. This coping mechanism reflected a poignant attempt to escape the harsh realities of his upbringing and find solace in a world of his own creation. Don Knotts' teenage years marked a significant turning point in his tumultuous life. While his early home life had been characterized by constant terror and mistreatment, a glimmer of hope emerged as he entered adolescence. At the age of 13, the burden of fear lifted when his father passed away. This pivotal moment allowed Knotts to gain some control over his troubled family dynamics, especially with his other brother, mitigating the terrors that had haunted him at home.
According to his daughter, Karen, this period marked a transformative phase for Knotts. As he entered high school, he underwent a remarkable change. Karen recalled to Closer Weekly that her father just blossomed. He became class president, contributed to a yearbook column, gained popularity, and for the first time, found a best friend. The escape from the oppressive atmosphere at home allowed him to flourish in the external world. However, Knott's perspective on his youth differed from the outward success he achieved. In a 1976 interview with the Los Angeles Times, he revealed a deeper, more internal struggle. Despite his achievements, Knott's admitted to feeling like a loser and recalled being unhappy for much of his youth. The family's financial struggles and his dissatisfaction with his size added to his sense of discontent. During this challenging period, Don Knotts found solace and an outlet for his creativity in a most unexpected place, with a friend named Danny. But Danny wasn't a human companion. He was a ventriloquist's dummy. Knotts turned to performing with this dummy, marking the beginning of his journey into entertainment. In the face of personal adversity, he discovered a way to express himself and find a sense of purpose through the art of ventriloquism. This early foray into performance would ultimately set the stage for his future success in the world of entertainment. Reportedly, contrary to a persistent and somewhat cruel rumor about Don Knotts being an incredibly strict Marine Corps drill instructor, Snopes debunks this tale as untrue. This rumor is part of a series of urban legends that fabricate unlikely military pasts for celebrities who don't fit the stereotypical mold, reminiscent of the unfounded notion of Mr. Rogers as a military sniper. In reality, Knotts had a genuine military service during World War II. Despite being perceived as sickly and undernourished, he was accepted into the military. The New York Times reports that Knotts found his niche in the Pacific Front as a member of the comedy troupe Stars and Gripes, assigned the crucial task of entertaining troops. Additionally, he took on the role of a nurse when the need arose, showcasing his versatility and dedication to supporting the wartime efforts. It was during his military service, while still performing with his ventriloquist dummy, Danny, that Knotts caught the attention of an older comedian named Red Ford. Ford's words left a lasting impact on Knotts, who recalled years later, You know something? You're a funny little son of a Bosch. By the time Knotts completed his military service, he had transitioned from ventriloquism to other forms of comedy. Appalachian Talk recounts a symbolic moment during this period when Knotts, somewhere in the South Pacific, tossed Danny, the ventriloquist's dummy, off a ship. This act marked a definitive shift in Knott's comedic journey, signaling his evolution as a performer and the beginning of a new chapter in his career. After his military service and earning a degree in education from West Virginia University in 1948, Don Knotts set out for New York City with only $100 in his pocket, as reported by the L.A. Times. His initial foray into the entertainment industry was marked by rejection, facing turndowns for a series of radio gigs. Although he eventually secured a spot on a soap opera, it wasn't until seven years later that he landed a role on Broadway, marking a turning point in his career. On Broadway, Knotts found a co-star and lifelong friend in Andy Griffith. The play that brought them together was the comedy No Time for Sergeants. This collaboration became instrumental in shaping Knotts's career trajectory. Knotts quickly gained a reputation as the ideal performer for a specific type of character, one that was nervous, anxious, and non-threatening. According to the New York Times, Knotts had a unique ability to steal material, and interestingly, those he borrowed from were largely accepting of it. This was because Knotts, with his small stature, thin frame, and nervous demeanor, served as the perfect comedic foil, making other male comics and actors appear more manly by comparison. The Noite explains that Knotts had a knack for making anyone he shared the stage with look one step closer to leading men. 
this characteristic would become a defining element of his comedic persona and contribute significantly to his success in the entertainment industry. Don Knotts, despite achieving TV stardom, faced profound struggles behind the scenes. The idea of him as Barney Fife in The Andy Griffith Show originated as a suggestion from Knotts himself to Andy Griffith, initially made in a seemingly casual manner. However, this chance proposal evolved into a match made in TV heaven, propelling Knotts into a level of success that many aspiring actors and comedians could only dream of. Yet the shadows of personal challenges loomed large in his life. According to writer Daniel de Vizet, as reported by the Charlotte Observer, Knotts grappled with overwhelming feelings of inferiority long before gracing the small screen alongside Griffith. The intensity of his self-doubt was such that, before a performance, he could spend days incapacitated in bed. In the 1950s, the weight of his emotional struggles led doctors to prescribe anti-anxiety drugs, eventually leading to knots grappling with addiction. Woven into the fabric of his anxiety was hypochondria, and he battled chronic insomnia. De Vizet, as cited by the L.A. Review of Books, noted that Knott's insomnia, at least in part, stemmed from a propensity to stay out late and indulge in the company of numerous women. Despite these challenges, De Vizet also highlighted that Knott's managed to abruptly quit his vices with remarkable speed. However, a turning point came with an accidental overdose of sleeping pills. Coupled with an ultimatum from his third wife, this event prompted Knotts to re-evaluate his lifestyle and, to some extent, alter his habits. Don Knotts, despite his tremendous success, grappled with a tragic internal struggle, as detailed by author Daniel de Vizet via the L.A. Review of Books. A significant aspect of this struggle was Knotts' difficulty in reconciling his on-screen personas with his own life consistently portraying characters who were submissive, anxious, and often the target of jokes, he found himself in a paradoxical situation, achieving unprecedented success while embodying traits that mirrored his own insecurities. De Visay reveals that Knotts reached a point in his career where he sought solace in the office of a Hollywood therapist. In a desperate attempt to break free from depression, self-doubt, and the influence of his Bible-thumping father, Knotts found himself shouting, Fick you, God! This intense moment of emotional release underscores the depth of his internal struggle and the complex relationship he had with his own success. Knotts' daughter, Karen, provides insight into the mercurial nature of her father. She recounts his battles with depression and her attempts to support him through the challenging cycles of negative thought that led to downward spirals. Despite the uphill battle, Karen notes that, by the end, her father had overcome the myriad challenges that plagued his life. She expressed pride in his efforts to cultivate happiness and emphasized that, ultimately, he had a genuine love for people. The departure of Don Knotts from The Andy Griffith Show marked a significant turning point in his career, driven by a combination of factors. According to his daughter Karen, the relentless demands of the show and the exhausting nature of the work played a major role in his decision to leave. She emphasized the challenges of the industry, stating that there's only so many stories you can tell. However, the LA Times reported that Knotts had initially planned to commit to only five seasons of the show from its inception, and true to his intentions, he exited the series in 1967. In an interview with the LA Times, Knotts revealed that the demanding nature of television production was a primary reason for his shift in focus. He explained, The grind gets to you in television, and that's primarily the reason I'm concentrating on pictures. Despite his departure, Knotts continued to make occasional guest appearances on the show, reflecting his amicable relationship with Andy Griffith. The aftermath of Gannat's exit saw The Andy Griffith Show continue without him, but the prevailing sentiment was that it lost the special charm and chemistry that the dynamic duo of Griffith and Knotts brought to the screen. 
The show, in the absence of Knott's, began to resemble just another offering in the landscape of 1960s television. Tragically, the anticipated success of Don Knotts's movie career did not materialize as he had hoped. Following his departure from television, Knotts secured a five-film deal with Universal Studios, while films like The Incredible Mr. Limpet, The Reluctant Astronaut, and The Ghost and Mr. Chicken are now considered brilliant classics. Knotts did not receive the critical acclaim he expected at the time. Despite their later recognition and influence on comedians such as Martin Short and Jim Carrey, Knotts struggled to achieve the level of success he had envisioned in the transition from TV to film. This unfulfilled potential casts a tragic shadow over the later stages of Don Knotts' career, overshadowing his groundbreaking contributions to the world of entertainment. The tragic chapter in Don Knotts' life unfolded when, at the age of 57, he received a disheartening diagnosis of macular degeneration. This debilitating condition, as explained by the Mayo Clinic, disrupts a person's ability to see directly in front of them, distorting or blurring anything in their direct line of sight. In several cases, it can progress to the point of causing an inability to recognize faces, presenting a progressively worsening challenge. Confronted with the harsh reality of his diagnosis, Knotts grappled with deep emotional struggles. The New York Times reported his candid acknowledgement of this difficult period, quoting him as saying, I got pretty depressed for a while. And then one day I said to myself, I bet a blind person would give his right arm to have the vision I have. This poignant reflection captures the internal turmoil he faced as he navigated the profound impact of macular degeneration on his once keen eyesight. Despite the emotional toll, Knotts displayed resilience by continuing to work, demonstrating an admirable determination. The American Macular Degeneration Foundation noted that he persisted in engaging in his favorite pastime, swimming laps. However, as time passed, the relentless progression of the condition took its toll. His eyesight deteriorated to a point where everyday activities became formidable challenges. Driving and reading were among the casualties of this tragic decline. In the wake of the popularity of variety shows, the entertainment landscape saw the emergence of the Don Knotts show as an ambitious venture for the acclaimed actor. This opportunity came on the heels of Knotts's departure from the iconic The Andy Griffith Show, and the new show, premiering in 1970, seemed poised for success at first glance. However, the optimism surrounding the show would soon be overshadowed by the harsh reality of its underwhelming reception. Amid the flourishing era of variety shows, the Don Knotts Show was placed on NBC, with the daunting task of capturing the audience's attention. MeTV reported that the network granted the show a significant 22-week run to make an impact, anticipating it to be a major hit. Yet, despite the initial promise, the show faced formidable challenges. Don Knotts, reflecting on the experience, acknowledged the fierce competition in the variety show landscape during that season. He revealed... We did all kinds of things. There was a tremendous competition that season for variety because everybody and his brother had a variety show. The very network dynamics added to the complexity, as Knotts had been essentially stolen away from CBS, the original home of the Andy Griffith show. This shift didn't sit well. But the prevailing confidence in the show's potential blinded many to the potential pitfalls. Efforts were made to salvage the situation, including bringing in Bob Sweeney, the director of The Andy Griffith Show, to rectify the issues. Notable additions were made, such as Gary Berghoff from M.A.S.H. as a recurring sketch comedy character, and the debut of acts like The Carpenters. Despite these attempts, the show's fate took a tragic turn, culminating in a premature end. In the aftermath of its cancellation, Don Knotts continued to make appearances on other variety shows, but the unsuccessful stint with his own show marked a somber chapter in his career. The Don Knotts show serves as a cautionary tale in the unpredictable world of television, 
where even the brightest prospects can falter in the face of intense competition and unforeseen challenges. In the early 2000s, Don Knotts faced a tragic battle with lung cancer, a somber revelation reported by Closer Weekly. During this challenging time, his long-standing friendship with Andy Griffith, though somewhat distant by then, rekindled in the face of adversity. Andy Griffith rushed to Knotts's side, standing steadfastly by him as he confronted the relentless onslaught of the disease. Nancy Stafford, their co-star from the television series Matlock, recalled the remarkable reunion, noting that when the two friends were together, it was as if no time had passed. Their camaraderie unfolded in a routine of singing, laughing, and exchanging jokes, creating a poignant and joyous connection. Stafford described their interaction as hysterical and emphasized the extraordinary communication they shared. Regrettably, Don Knotts ultimately succumbed to his battle with lung cancer. Fourteen years after his passing, in 2020, his daughter Karen Knotts opened up about the final moments with her father. Speaking to Closer Weekly, she revealed a bittersweet aspect of those challenging days. Despite the gravity of his condition, Knotts maintained his innate sense of humor. Karen recalled the poignant scene where, even in the face of death, her father had them in fits of laughter with his spontaneous and naturally funny remarks. However, in a moment of deep regret, Karen disclosed that she had left her father's side when she and her stepmother burst into laughter. She shared this poignant detail with director Howard Storm, who urged her to stay, laughed wholeheartedly, and let her father hear her joy. Reflecting on this advice, Karen expressed regret over not standing by her father and allowing him to hear the laughter that he, even in his final moments, had sparked. Don Knotts, the beloved actor renowned for his comedic genius, departed from the world on February 24, 2006. People magazine recounted the poignant scene of his final moments, noting that among the very last individuals to sit at his bedside was none other than his longtime friend, Andy Griffith. Griffith, with a heavy heart, shared his last moments with Knotts, expressing his love and holding his hand. In a heartfelt recollection, Griffith revealed, I told him I loved him, and I held his hand. His chest heaved several times, and I believe he heard my voice. Knotts, who had ceased smoking decades before his diagnosis, faced the news of his lung cancer diagnosis with remarkable resilience and optimism. Even in the wake of such a grave prognosis, he remained upbeat and positive. One notable aspect of his approach was his decision not to disclose his chemotherapy sessions to his children. He maintained an unwavering belief in overcoming the illness, intending to carry on with life as if the diagnosis were just a minor obstacle along the journey. The official cause of Don Knotts's demise was attributed to pulmonary and respiratory complications. Reports indicated that he had been contending with unspecified health problems that led to the cancellation of appearances in the preceding years. The details of his health struggles remained private, adding a layer of mystery to the challenges he faced in the twilight of his life. In the aftermath of his passing, those closest to Don Knotts remembered him with deep affection. Andy Griffith, reflecting on their enduring friendship, characterized Knotts as modest, humble, and exceptionally bright. Ron Howard, another cherished colleague, paid tribute to Knotts as just one of those truly kind people. The collective memories of those who knew him best paint a portrait of a man whose warmth, humility, and comedic brilliance left an indelible mark on the hearts of those who had the privilege of sharing his journey. Reportedly, Don Knotts led a colorful personal life marked by three marriages. His first union was with Catherine Metz in 1947, a marriage that endured for 17 years and bore two children, a son named Thomas and a daughter named Karen. The couple eventually parted ways in 1964. Undeterred by the trials of matrimony, Knotts embarked on a second marriage with Laura Lee Sukna, a union that spanned from 1974 to 1983. Despite the challenges, his romantic journey didn't end there. 
his final and enduring love story unfolded with Francis Yarbrough. They exchanged vows in 2002 and remained devoted to each other until Don Knotts's passing in 2006. Knotts's charismatic charm was not confined to his personal life. It radiated through his professional endeavors, earning him adoration from fans and industry peers alike. In 2000, he received a star on the prestigious Hollywood Walk of Fame, a testament to his enduring impact on the entertainment world. The affection for Knotts extended beyond the glitz of Hollywood. In a poignant tribute to their hometown hero, Morgantown, West Virginia, commissioned artist Jamie Lester to craft a sculpture in his likeness. Unveiled in 2016, the sculpture stands as a permanent testament to the timeless laughter and joy Don Knotts brought to the world. Despite the complexities of his personal life, Knotts's legacy endures, immortalized both on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and in the heart of his hometown. What do you think about the rumors in Don Knotts' life confirmed by his daughter? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.